But as long as I can remember, strength has always been a big part of my life. I'm born and raised on a farm called Lineberg, which is placed in, this, in the south of Sweden. And uh, we here have uh, milk production and beef. Being raised on a farm has helped me a lot in my sport because uh, I'm used to use my body to work with. I'm used to picking up stones on the fields. I've been working hard in the, in the forest, ch chopping timbers for many years. And I've also uh, been th taught, even since I was a kid, that uh, everything doesn't come by a day. You have to work hard for a long time to, to reach your, your goals. I'm married to Christine and we together have the boy David. Nobody knows me better than Christine and uh, that's really helpful when we're in, in a big contest, for example. You're under a lot of pressure and she knows what to say and when to say it. So, uh, and she also really, she knows almost everything about the strongman sport. So she's a great coach and she's uh, also, it's also great to have uh, your family around you when you compete. What say you to Heston? We waited a few years before before we got David, and that was because we were traveling so much, and he was with me all the time. <laughs> if David decides that he wants to tr compete in strongman, then of course I, I can give him some good advices, but. Uh, as I said, this is his journey, his, his life, and he has to make all decisions for himself. But, of course, if he, if he really wants to go for it, for sure, for sure I can give him some good advices. Mm -hmm. yeah. Growing up as a kid, I was involved with, different, with, with many different sports, and uh, I was actually competing a lot in tracking field as, as a hurdler. And then uh, winter time, I was doing a lot of downhill and, and slalom. But for some reason, when we started to lift weights, I just felt that this is this is me. This is what I want to do. And uh, I came into to the strongman sport like everything else in life, like by coincidence. We started to train when my brother got a bar from my grandma when he turned 14. I actually started to compete first in bench press competitions. And then the same promoter that, that made the bench press contest, he was also pr promoting Sweden's Strongest Man. He, he kept on calling and calling, and then I finally went to the contest. I won that contest, and then a few weeks later, they called me from World's Strongest Man and took me over to Bahamas. I, did a, I made it into the final the first time I went. Ever since that day, I've been more or less living on, strongman co living on strength and strongman competitions. For as long as I can remember, I've always been the, the strongest guy first on the, in the school and then when I was in the army I was the strongest guy that ever made the recruits for the army and so I, I always been very strong but of course I, I've been training like a madman for, for many years as well. I train in uh, my own small gym just outside the farm. I usually train about six days a week in the gym, and then above that I also train once or twice, either cardio or events, event training. Being a drug-free athlete and a big believer on drug-free training, it is very important not to overtrain. Train enough, but not too much. Try to keep the workout just under one hour. I'm interested in almost everything, all the, all the boy stuff. Like cars, hunting, fishing, and all, all stuff like that. Now, with uh, some success in, in sport, I have a little bit more money, so now I can, I can afford to do the things I enjoy. So I, I try to do a bit of car racing, and I try to restore old cars. And it's also important for me to have hobbies that don't have anything to do with strength. <laughs> My old Pontiac is a car I actually bought when I was 18 years old. Every time I take it out of the garage, 
uh, it's like a little bit of adrenaline kick. It's a pretty wild machine and uh, it just makes me feel 18 years old again and all the old memories is coming back. I love the Strongman sport because it's, it's different events in every contest. It's not like we're going like to make the same exercise in, in every contest. So different events in, in every game and also uh, the friendship between the athletes has been really great. We have, uh, I mean, of course we're trying to beat the living hell out of each other when we compete. But on the other hand, they're really good friends between the meets. Strongman is a great sport if you love to compete in strongman. And if strongman is really your, your dream, go for it. But on the other hand, strongman is one of the toughest jobs you can ever have. So don't do it just because you think you're good at it. Do it because you love it. I think I will compete in a strongman sport as long as I think it's fun. I've been very blessed and I won everything there is in this sport. And uh, if I find something else to do, which I will enjoy more than I will do that, but right now, I really enjoy Strongman, and I will go for it as hard as I can for a few more years. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. Everybody understands that you have to train very hard to gain muscle and strength. But not everybody understands the incredible amount of food that you also have to eat to gain your strength. I try to eat something at least every third hour and then between the meals I also take a lot of supplements. Because there is such a big jungle out there on the market of supplements, I will now try to guide you through it and tell you what to look for and what to try to avoid. It's important to know that the supplement is just a supplement. It's not a replacement for your regular meals. First out in the group of nutrition is the protein. Protein intake is a must to gain muscles. There is many different sources from where the protein powder can be made. I personally like the protein made out of whey the best because it's very fast for the body to absorb. It's also great because it has all the important amino acids in it. Protein is great for gaining muscles, but it's also great for losing weight if you do it in the right way. Personally, I take proteins before and after my workout. I also take it before I go to bed. I try to get between 30 and 70 grams of protein in every meal. I think a good protein should be high concentrated, should be easy to mix and have a very low price. And that's a combination seldom seen. So remember when you buy proteins, try to avoid protein powder made out of milk and soya. Try to find cheap, high quality protein powder made out of whey. Next out, weight gainers. Gainers is a product that you should have a 70-25% mix of carbs and protein. And this is a product I've been using a lot of over the years. Being as big as I am, it is hard to eat enough carbs otherwise. I also think that most people that train or lift weights eat two liter carbs. I mostly use gainers in the low season. I usually take it between meals to gain weight. Gainers can also work fine before a workout. It's the fast carbs that will make the insulin level high. High insulin level will push more energy and water into the muscle and that will give us more power. Next out is creatine. Creatine is a product that comes from meat. The only problem is that we have to eat five kilos a day to get the positive effects that we are looking for. And believe it or not, five kilos of steak a day is something that even I find hard. Creatine works best for me if I take it in periods. Four weeks on, three weeks off. If you feel no or a very small effect by creatine, can you try to take it together with fast carbs? The fast carbs will help your body to absorb it. I usually take creatine when I'm competing or when I'm in a very heavy training session. 
and I will now give you an example from a day of my life. Well, I hope you learned something from this. And remember, don't be afraid to gain weight. You have to gain weight to gain strength. Good luck. Welcome to my gym. 40 years ago was this the local fire station. Today is this place well known as the Sweat Gym. It's in this old building I've been training for many years and it's right here I gained all my strength. I will now show you a routine for gaining strength and body mass. Day one is chest and tricep, and we start off with some bench press. Bench press is a good exercise, not only for the chest, but also to strengthen the whole upper body. I start with some pump sets and end the routine with some heavy doubles. Today ending on 260 kilos. I use the same system in dumbbell press as in bench press. Starting with pump sets, ending with two heavy sets with two repetitions in each. We have now gone heavy in two press exercises. Next we're going to focus on the upper pecs by using incline bench press. Here I focus more on high reps to increase my endurance. The front squat movement is coming back in many strongman exercises. Two good examples of that is the stones and the Kona circle. I also like the front squat because it's a very safe exercise for my back.
I do five to eight reps in each set, starting with the easy weight and working myself up to the big weights. Now it's time for the leg press. In the front squat we put a lot of stress on the front side of the legs. Now we're going to try to get the hamstrings more involved. Let's go. It's important to keep the hips down through the whole movement, to put the stress on the legs and not on the back. The only problem with leg press is that it's so hard to get on enough weight. This time I've asked my brother, three-time World Strongest Man competitor, Torbjörn, to get on top of it. And next up is shoulder presses. And just like in a strongman circuit, we will do it standing up. As a warm up weight, we use 60 kilos. Now I will make a couple of singles, starting off with 100 kilos. This is a great exercise for explosive strength. Now when, when all the fast fibers is tied, we're going to move on to do a couple of sets with some more reps in. My arms have always been my strength. They have now developed to that point, so I don't need to push it anymore. But it was by using this program that I came this far.
It's necessary to have a strong back to compete in strongman. I focus hard on deadlifts, cleans and rowing. In your back training you also have to use your head. Don't go too heavy, too often. After bend over rows, it's time for deadlift. Try to keep your head up, your back straight and your hips as low as possible. It's now time for power cleans. I focus harder on power cleans than deadlift every second week and vice versa. I train my grip three times a week because a strong man without a grip ain't gonna make it far. This is a great exercise for the grip. Now after this workout, I'm really thirsty. Welcome to my van wall. The training here have two purposes. Number one, to increase my strength and endurance. And number two, to improve my technique. Now we are going to train some of the most basic strongman exercises. I use these events because they are great for both strength and endurance. And the technique are coming back in many other strongman exercises. First out, truck pull. The key in all pulls is to stay as low as possible with the hips. I start the pull by using legs and arms and then switching over to only legs. I usually make the truck pull twice, pulling 25 to 30 meters every time. Next up, joke race. Joke is an excellent exercise for training legs and back and hips. We're gonna do this in sets of three, starting off with 300 kilos, and the last set will be with 400 kilos. Let's go. When I do the joke race, I always make sure to place the bar very high on my shoulders. 
I start off with small strides and then just making the strides longer and longer. I make sure to keep my head up the whole time. I do this three times and I walk between 20 and 25 meters every time. So now we are nice and warm after the yoke race, and I think we're more than ready for the third event, which is going to be the farmer's walk. We here have two suitcases, each weighing 130 kilos. And this is an excellent event for training back and legs, and also for the grip. So if you are ready, let's go. I place my hand slightly behind center and I lock the grip with my thumb. The walking technique in farmer's walk is very similar to the yoke race. The key in farmer's walk is to keep the suitcases away from the legs. I usually walk two times 80 meters. This old tire weighs 430 kilos and comes from my farm. Now we're going to use it as a training tool. Tire flip is another great exercise for overall strength. Okay, let's flip. I try to use the same technique in tire flip as a power clean would be in the gym, using more back than arms. I always squat down as deep as possible before each lift. I do this eight flips and I make it twice. This was pretty easy. Next challenge, car flip. And now last out, we're going to do one of the most traditional strongmen of them all. Yeah. 
There is a few different ways to lift these stones, and I'm going to show you the three most common ones. Uh, I'm going to start off with the, the easiest way to lift the stone, which is you're going to pick it up to your knees with your back. When you got the stone up to your knee, you front squat as deep as you can and re-grip the stone. And then you, then you front squat with a straight back as you can. And this is, as I said, probably the easiest way to lift the stone. The only problem is it's also the slowest way. And now the second way to lift the stone. You start off to lift off the stone into your knees in the same way as the first one. But instead of squatting down when you're re-gripping, you're staying high with your hips the whole time, you're just re-gripping with your hips high. And then from that position, you just pull your hips through and up it goes. This is a pretty fast way, but it's not as powerful. And now we're gonna do the third way my way, the fastest way. For nearly a decade, Magnus Samuelsson has been among the best of the best in the strength world. Competing against men from all corners of the world, he has proved himself to be one of our time's great strength legends. Eight times finalist in the world's strongest man, four times on the podium, no active athlete equals his score sheet. Magnus Samuelsson! 2001, he came to the IFSA Super Series Finals as a leader and went for the title. One, two, three, four, five, That's it. You knew 10 was the record, you just have to have 11, right? Yeah, I know Hugo is a very, very strong presser, and uh, I can feel the power starting to end around 9. 10 felt okay, but 11, um, you know, maybe, maybe, but I felt it in the end, no, it, it stopped, but uh, I'm pleased with it. Ready! In the finals, they also have the classical track pull. Some of the world's best leg strength was available in this competition, and yet Magnus Samuelsson steps up as a leader and hooks up the Scania and just keeps going. <laughs> that time is good enough to beat the best once again. The final event in the competition was the medley. Faced with Hugo Girard, who was already too far behind to catch Samuelson, it was a matter of prestige who would win the final event. Starting out with a tire flip, Girard takes a little bit of a lead and reaches the farmer's walk weights first.
and as they reach the barrels for the loading, Samuelson shows his great strength and routine. Delivers the strength and adds some speed. Second barrel up and equal, and as they reach the third barrel, Samuelson is a half a second ahead and wins the event, wins the finals, and wins the International Championship 2001. Different strongman events demand different kinds of strength. Deadlift, what you need is just the sheer raw power. The crucifix is where you fight the pain of the static pressure towards your shoulders. Samuelson's trademark is the complex events where you get to use your entire body. Keep the momentum going, look at the power. Oh, an incredible time, 24.75. As soon as he makes the turn, all the leading contenders are within his sight. Creeping up now on Apple as Marky goes past Andrik Ugiri. Oh my goodness, how on earth he's managing to hang on, I don't know. He's using chalk on his hands to try and help the grip, and he's gone past the leader. Phil Fister is beaten. He wants more, though. Approaching 80 metres, it may well be just short. In the early days, Magnus Samuelsson was faster but lighter. Weighing only about 120, 125 kilos, Magnus Samuelsson really kept speed going. In the top five, there's the first of the sacks. This guy is so quick across the ground. But what he's carrying, 100 kilos each hand. Yeah, but I like it much, much heavier if I can choose, buddy. As time has gone, Magnus Samuelsson has grown bigger, has grown stronger. The Atlas Stones, five stones loaded up onto platforms. The event that has given him the name King of Stones. On the international scene, Magnus has dominated for many years, but the domination on the Swedish scene has been complete. He is one Sweden's strongest man. Every time he has entered the competition, twice he has passed, and then his little brother has taken the title. Sweden's Strongest Man is a televised, very popular show on Swedish television and has been for many years now. And Magnus Samuelsson has become a household name as Sweden's Strongest Man. In 98 he became the world's strongest man, but this is where he starts out from, winning Sweden's Strongest Man every year. In 2003 was no exception, Magnus kept right at the top, demonstrating his enormous strength through every single event. The only competitor in Sweden to manage to turn over all five of the Fingal's fingers. None of the others actually even reached finger number five, but Samuelson lifts it up and walks it over and tips it over to complete and win the title of Sweden's strongest man once again. Seeing how this man has developed through the years and up till now, 
we can just say that many years are to come of titles, of strength, and of conquering the rest of the world. Magnus Samuelsson, the giant Swede, is a legend of strength.